Joining us now for the interview is Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri. She has a new memoir out called Plenty Ladylike. Senator, it's great to have you here with us. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Rachel. And by the way, yep. you know you've made it when? When you are, are parodied on Saturday Night Live. Oh, Congratulations. well. Congratulations. Here's the thing. You know that was the, pretty cool. You know what's the weird thing? It looked like she was wearing my exact clothes. I and I keep my clothes in the building. Like, I don't, I don't wear, like, a suit when I go home. They and probably, I felt like, they probably figured out a way to get them. I yeah. think it's quite possible yeah. I need yeah. to send the dry cleaning bill to them. Uh, but thank you for that. You bet. <laughs> so in that interview this morning, you sounded like you maybe knew these resignations were coming today. Is that true? Well, I, I certainly had been in contact with the administration and, um, frankly, been in contact with uh, Jonathan Butler's family over the weekend. The hunger striker. Um, yeah. I mean, I found that sometimes you can do better work when you are quietly reaching out and talking and trying to move the needle. And these, but the credit goes to these kids. The credit goes to these kids who took a stand and to the football players who went to visit the young man who had gone days without food. Mm -hmm. And they were motivated and moved by his commitment. And then I was proud that the, it wasn't just the black players that were in that picture. It was the team and the coach that all kind of came together and said, you know, we're one here too, and something needs to happen. There needs to be a reprioritization of how important this problem is on campus. And I'm proud that I think today uh, the university really took a meaningful step towards that. And admiring the uh, accomplishments and the sort of tenacity and dedication of those activists uh, is sort of one lane here. But the other issue is the, the veracity of their complaints and their concerns that there's uh, not just been random racially tinged incidents at the University of Missouri, but that there is a problem with race relations and the way that racially biased and, uh, and racially inflected incidents are happen uh, are, are dealt with when they happen at that campus. You think the substance of their complaints is fair? I do think uh, on uh, several issues. I think um, the, the substance of how diverse the faculty is. Mm -hmm. I think this is a problem all over America. And by the way, in fairness to the University of Missouri, uh, I bet you there's a lot of a lot of college administrations that over the next week are going to be checking to see what they're doing, mm -hmm. checking to see uh, how much effort they've put in to retaining students who come in in some way marginalized because of socioeconomic status or because of minority status. I think that this will be an impetus across the country for all of higher education to really do a hard look in the mirror about their commitment to making sure that their their campuses are tolerant and inclusive and doing the best job they can to make sure that all students are welcome and feel safe. One of the things that um, feels very relevant to me about your book is that a lot of the book, I mean everything, including the title, Plenty Ladylike is the title, a lot of your book is about things that you have faced as the first woman this and the first woman that and as a, a lonely woman in a prosecutor's office or a lonely woman in the legislature, a lot of things that you've done where you were in mostly male environments and the kinds of sexism that you experienced and the way that you dealt with it. I, I wonder, looking at the situation at the University of Missouri, looking at the resignation of the president and the chancellor now, if you feel like you have learned things about the way to demonstrate leadership in the face of low-level intolerance that's otherwise passed over, otherwise seen as the normal way of doing business. Well, one of the things I say in the book, and one of the things I'm fearful of is that um, I confess, I'm not sure I handled it right. When I was a young woman and I faced some really pretty blatant and ugly sexism in the Missouri legislature in the early 80s, uh, but I w really believed that if I would have publicly confronted it, it would have minimized my effectiveness as a legislator. And so I kind of internalized all that and said, I'm going to show them. Mm -hmm. I used it as fuel. I'm going to, I'm better at this than you are. I'm going to work harder at this than you do. I'm going to go farther than you. And the Speaker of the House, which I talk about in there, who is the one who told me when I asked him how, if he could help me get my bill out of committee as a freshman legislator in 1983, he said, did you bring your knee pads? I ended up in the United States Senate and he ended up in prison. So the plan to try to go farther kind of worked. Um, and I'm not sure that was the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. I think young women today, I hope, have more information and more confidence to do a better job of confronting. And these young people are a great example. Uh, this was a bold thing for this young man to do. And then he was a leader and got others to follow him, and he impacted real change that I think will make a difference for many other students of color at the University of Missouri.
Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.